In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do the reverse tie stitch. This is going to be the last pine needle basket making video that I post to YouTube. There are two sides to the tie stitch. Down here at the bottom, you can see they have um, just straight lines. They look like straight, uh, we'll call them spokes. And on the reverse side, diagonal stitch, okay? For the sides, when I was bringing up the sides, I didn't want that diagonal stitch on the outside. I wanted the sides to look straight, which means the diagonal stitch is in the inside. So I have switched my operation as I'm bringing up the sides so that the outsides are straight. See the bottom and see the sides. And I'm just gradually bringing it up, um, just kind of holding it where I want it in position. So let me show you how we do the the, the reverse tie stitch. I do have another video where I show you the tie stitch. I'm not sure if it's on this basket or another basket. I probably have a couple of videos on that. Okay, my thread is right here on the back and I need to connect this this portion right here. I need to connect it right right there. So I hold it in the place where I want that coil to be. My thread's on the back. I am on the right side of this spoke right here. And I want to join, I'm going to go to here, the next spoke. So I'm on the, my thread's on the right. I need to go to the left between those two coils of the last, the last coil. Go right between it. I don't split any of the thread, uh, of the coils. Okay, so there's my diagonal. And now we come up over the top and we, we first, we go again between the two coils of the, the one we just attached to the previous coil and we go between them on the right side. It's important to do it on the right side first, right and then left. But right now we're just doing the right. This probably would be easier to show if my thread wasn't so long, but I just started with a new thread. Okay, we've gone over the top once. We need to go over a second time. On the second time, we go on the left side of the spoke. We go in between the coils. We're in, so we're joining this top coil to the previous coil. Okay, so we've been around twice, and now we need our thread to end up on the right side of this spoke so that we can do our diagonal. So we come up here, and I want to go all the way around. So I'm actually going to come in between the top, between the top coil and the previous coil. because I'm going to go all the way around the post. I just want to get it here. I could go down, but I don't want to. I'm going to go all the way around first. So I'm going to go around the post. So I've got a nice locking stitch. It helps to keep things from shifting to do that little locking stitch. I don't know if everybody does it, but I do. I'm on the right. I go to the right side of this post and I'm going down between the last coil and the previous coil on the left side. So we always go the opposite. I'm, my thread's on the right, so I need to go onto the left of that. And, and that is um, kind of what stabilizes this st stitch to, to work left, right, left, right. And that way, you know, you, you're, it's like you're holding the two, um, so the two spokes together by doing it that way. Okay, now it's time to go over the top. When we go over the top, we, we go, this is the 
the coil we're adding, that's the previous coil, we go to the right side between the coils on the right side of this. Okay, now the second time over, we go on the left side of the spoke. It's actually easier to do this when I'm not recording. But recording, it's adds extra challenge. Now I need to go around the post and I want to come all the way around. So I'm on the back side, I'm looking between the two posts. I'm coming to the right side, my right, between the coil we're adding to the previous coil. I'm going between them now. And I'm going to go with this, I'm going to go all the way around by passing it, by passing it right here between, so I've gone all the way around and I went right in that gap right there. So I'm back on the back and then I need to come back to the front so that my thread is where I want it to be before I go to the next spoke. I'm ready for my diagonal now. So, let me see if I can do it a little faster. Left side. Ah, thread. All right. Sometimes it's helpful to hold your thread, the loop, with your left hand so it doesn't catch on stuff. And also, if you do that, it prevents you from getting knots. Okay, yeah, and I have to add needles. Always gotta add needles keep that going to so keep the gauge a constant thickness okay now come over the top and go down into the right side first it's always right and then left and then second time go on the left second row down And then I want to make my locking stitch, which goes around the post. So I come through on the right, go all the way around. So I've made a complete circle. And we're back on the right side of the post. And my hair, a piece of my hair got in there. I swear, my hair gets into every project I do. And I crochet, hair gets crocheted into the project. Okay, I hope I've shown that well enough. It's so hard to know. Let me try it. This is very awkward. I have the camera basically between my legs. Um, this way I can actually see the monitor and see what it is I am doing. <laughs> um, maybe, because I'm not sure that the angle that I showed you was the best that you could see it. Oops, looks like my straw is loose, so I have to add another needle. Okay, so my thread, you can see my thread is on the right side. Um, I need to make my diagonal, so I go from the right side to the left, and I want to go right between the coils, right between the coil on the left side of that spoke. Oops, I should have my thread on this side so it'll be... I'm going to put it in the basket so I don't catch anything. <laughs> right, now would it get a knot, right? How did that happen? It's so annoying. Okay, I got my thread straightened out. Okay. I have my diagonal. Now I come over the top. I'm having to really reach. I could not do this for very long. It would hurt my back because um, I'm having to reach around the camera. And see, I was off the camera and the basket is so long. <laughs> okay, now I go to the right side first. I'm top coil, the previous coil. Uh, I need to find the space between them here. Those two are so close together, it's hard to see. I hope that's... Okay, I got it. So, I'm on the... I go on... 
through the right side of this spoke. Now I go to the left side of the spoke. And then after that, we are going to go around the post to make our locking stitch. So we go to the right side and we're going to go all the way around the post. And then we come between the post, looking over the outside of the edge of the basket. And then we're ready for the diagonal. Now I know you see that sticking out. Sometimes that happens. So what we'll do is we'll just snip off that little thing that's sticking out. I don't even know if that was good because I feel like I just kept getting off camera. It's I'm trying to figure out the technology that I need, the program that I need to mirror my screen from, I would love it if it was from the camera, but it could be from the phone. I don't usually record from my phone. I usually record from a digital camera. But the problem is I can't always see what it is that's on the screen. I'm putting my thread in the basket so that way I can see it. And it's less likely to catch on something. There's my diagonal over the top. On the right side. Let's put my thread in here because it's long. We did the right. Now we have to go over to the left. And I cannot hold this, I cannot hold this properly because I'm stretching around the camera and bending over the camera between the coils, including the top coil and the previous coil and then our locking stitch I'm gonna, I want to go all the way around so I start on the right and then I'm going to pass my thread in this gap right here so I pass it like this so you can see my thread going underneath and then I come back out on the right and that puts my thread in the position that it needs to be. And I'm not holding this tight. See, normally I, I hold it with this hand, but I'm trying to show you. And it is always harder to do this when I am trying to show how to do it. I'm sitting on my front porch. This is my view this morning. A little while ago, the cats were out here playing, but they ran away when they saw me. And I have bird feeders, which are just over there. And I have flowers and the bird bath. And so I like to sit out here in the morning before it gets too hot to work on my baskets or other projects. I like to shove it so it goes into the stitch, the previous stitch. That way it's, you know, pretty secure. I don't know, I think we could still get one more. I must have gone too far without putting it some in. I can see that it kind of went up to here. All right, are you ready for the next? I hope you're getting this. I hope I'm getting this. I'm on the right. I have to go on to the left. Sometimes I sew so them so tight it's really hard to see the, the space between the coils. Maybe I should go over definitions. I'm calling this a spoke. But when I'm dealing with going around it, I sometimes refer to that as a post. And that's useful 
like when you're adding beads to think of it as a post. This is the tie stitch. It kind of forms straight lines. This is the regular tie stitch and this is the reverse tie stitch. And this is a faggoting stitch. I have a separate video where I show you how I did that. Um, I think I've covered this well enough that you should be able to get the hang of it, I hope. <laughs> I'm going to continue to bring up the sides of my basket until I'm happy with the size. I'm thinking that this is so big. See how big it is? Um, I'm thinking that this would be a wonderful bread basket and I'm just gradually bringing up the sides. When I get it to the height that I want, I will probably do a wrapped row um, on the top outer edge. I'm not sure if I'm going to add handles. I might decide to add handles on each end. You know, like I, I never really know what the end result is going to be. I might have a general idea, but I just kind of work it and until I'm ready for the next thing. And somehow, as I watch it grow and develop, the basket kind of tells me what it is that I need to do. You see how the, the sides... Uh-oh, there's a mistake right there. I got a diagonal on that side. There's not supposed to be a diagonal on that side. Oh, yep, I see it. It's missing right there. There's a mistake. Hmm. But what I wanted was no diagonals on the sides, only on the bottom. I like the way it looks on the bottom. So I hope this was helpful. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe. This is going to be the last pine needle basket making video that I post to YouTube. And I'll, I'm going to explain why. There, I will be making more pine needle basket uh, videos. I have lots of ideas and lots of plans and lots of tools and supplies and I absolutely love making baskets. But here's the problem I ran into. My YouTube channel is mostly a, it's a hodgepodge of domestic activities. It could be crafts, sewing, costume making, my farm animals, a little bit of gardening, some home repairs. It's a, it's a varied channel. I have many interests. My most um, successful videos have been sewing, crafts, and pine needle basketry. And I absolutely love making baskets. And there's so much to explore and so many techs and tips and techniques that I want to explore and, and expand my knowledge of pine needle basketry. I've tried not to get into politics on YouTube because I understand uh, the censure that they do for uh, people who do. I did touch on it briefly in, in one video and it was it was a funny video. I thought it was, oh this is, you know, just, I was just having fun. But I guess the ideas and views don't, are not liked by YouTube. So I've noticed that YouTube is hiding my content. I'm getting subscribers that say, they, they see a video and they're like, oh, I haven't seen a video from you lately. Uh, I've been posting a video every week, Monday morning at 8 o'clock. So, and, and I've been at friends' home, homes um, and they want to see a certain video and I, you know, tell them just, just look it up. And they have a hard time finding me. I am being hidden by YouTube. I, for, at one time, I had a Twitter account. I got banned from that. I didn't do anything just who I follow, oh my goodness. And that's, that's, you're, gonna, you're gonna ban me just because I follow this person that you decided to ban, along with 74 other million people. Um, I had an Etsy shop and I had run into some trouble, which is um, the same content of the video that I put on YouTube that has kind of suppressed my YouTube uh, earnings and has suppressed my ability to be found on YouTube because I am not politically correct. I am not of the right political mindset. I 
don't have the right ideas according to the normal, uh, common, accepted sheep mentality. I don't, I'm not that person. I had some difficulty with um, Etsy and they treated me very poorly. I will do a separate video on that topic. And so I decided it was time to leave Etsy and I'm glad I did. I don't like their political ideas. I don't like how their political pandering to every every left-wing outlet. And so I decided it would be best to leave Etsy. And I, I, since I've been watching a lot of videos of people complaining about Etsy's um, free shipping policies and, and other things, I won't go into all that. And I also left January of this year, I left social media um, because it was becoming uh, politically hostile and Facebook was allowing people that are not my friends to message me, private message me and harass me and it was just becoming just impossible and frustrating to even be on Facebook. So I left Facebook, I left all social media since January. Uh, I, for the most part I, I feel like social media is just a complete fake. We, the people, started using it to spread the truth, but they didn't like it. So they they um, tried to fact check the truth, and they tried to suppress stories that they didn't agree with. And it was just aggravating and frustrating to be on there anymore. And then I, through visiting family and friends, I, I realized, you know what? You think you know somebody? You don't. You don't. You don't know them. You think you're close with somebody and you're not. And and then, you know, you can even have misunderstandings of people and and have falling outs over social media because some people are just not as skilled with the typed word or the written word as others. And, and so you can misunderstand and, and, and have divisions because of it. So face-to-face, one-on-one conversations are the best mode of communication and anything else is open to misinterpretation and misunderstanding and you could be misunderstood and and it could cause hurts and upset so I just found social media bye-bye I feel like I have to start all over so all my internet connections are sort of ground zero I'm starting all over and I have to work extra hard on YouTube to make it. So I've decided that I need to branch out and look at other possibilities in case I get kicked off of YouTube. I don't know if that'll happen, but right now YouTube is, is doing everything they can to make it hard for me to be a success. So I started an account with Rumble. And right now, the only thing on that channel is pine needle basketry. So I saw that I could have, I saw that they had an option to have my YouTube videos on Rumble. Well, I did that. But I made a mistake and I gave Rumble the rights to the videos, to control them. And it ran into two problems. One, it put a it, a copyright on my videos that I created on YouTube so they became demonetized so now a lot of my pine needle basketry videos that are both on rumble and on YouTube are not making any money they're getting great 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 uh, views a lot of people are watching them because it's a popular subject so I'm going to be going back through my channel and I'm going to be deleting all of those that are already on rumble Here's another problem. Because Google, the big giant tech media, you know, like Facebook, like Twitter, they they like to promote their own stuff. So Rumble is struggling and they actually are have a lawsuit against Google because they're not getting the traffic and that's frustrating because that means I'm not getting the traffic over there that I was getting here on YouTube. So I'm just going to stop posting Pine Needle Basket videos on YouTube and I'm only going to put them on my Rumble channel. Um, I will put a link to that channel at the bottom of this video and I probably, I may have already put the link to that channel 
underneath the description of the playlist. So you're going to see some videos disappear, um, but have no fear, they're over on Rumble. Just go to Rumble and subscribe there. And if you are only interested in my pine needle basketry and nothing else, then that channel is the perfect channel for you. And you really, really help me if you just go over there and subscribe. I will be posting my pine needle basket videos at Rumble. No more on YouTube. I don't know if that's a, the right decision or a good decision or not because I don't get the, the amount of traffic or views over there. But hopefully, as um, lawsuits are being filed against Google, Facebook, and Twitter, hopefully in the future things will change and maybe Rumble will have a fair chance and maybe my videos will be successful over there. Um, so you can help me out by going over to Rumble and subscribing to that channel and watching the videos there and, and I, eventually I will get a website together and I will focus on basket making and put you know a lot of question and answers and sp extra tips and pictures and different things but I, I just haven't got to there yet I've, just, I've got a ton of stuff happening in my life right now a lot of stuff to deal with um, I'm constantly busy I go from project to project I've got traveling just a ton of stuff so I give me time but just let you know this is my last video that I will be posting on YouTube with pine needle basketry oh I just saw a hummingbird it just stopped right there and looked at me and then it flew away cool is it a sign <laughs> well anyways thanks for watching and thanks for listening to my little rant yeah, I'm probably a little bit upset with YouTube and Google because it hurts the little guy. And the internet is a doggy dog world and you have to you have to do what you have to do. You have to fight for your rights, you have to stand up and you have to make tough decisions. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your help. It really helps me. It helps my YouTube channel. It helps my algorithms. If you give me a thumbs up, if you subscribe to my channel, and if you share my videos, that will help me tremendously to show YouTube, hey, this lady's got good content. Hey, this lady is worth watching.